least in the last two or three years, our production actually is uh, uh, declined in, in some way from the peaks. Yields are, have declined in the last five or six years. Uh, uh, the huge amount, even uh, even uh, the cult cultivated area has declined from 13 million to 12 and a half million hectares. Uh, going forward, the challenge is going to get worse. Where does research, development, innovation, how would you infuse R&D and innovation in strengthening our cotton production and the value chain? I know it's a big question, but uh, my request is if you can uh, respond in maybe seven or eight minutes. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. Thank you, Chandra Shekhar. First of all, thank you, IMC for making agriculture the core subject of this event today. Uh, there, there have been so many events, but agriculture was only a part of that event, and again, this is the core subject. So thank you, IMC. Three of the IMC stalwarts are already, you know, uh, we are taking their advisory for I did with them. Suresh Baikur, thank you, one of them. The Cotton Man of India, Chandra Shekhar Ji, one of them. He is an advisor to our All India Cotton FU Association. Ashe Ji is one of them, his family, the food field, is uh, helping us get the bio inputs on ground taking field trials. The challenge of is very evident that production and productivity are the two things that we look at simultaneously. If India is producing enough, we are happy. And if we are getting enough, we are happy. We don't look at even tomorrow only but on the day after tomorrow. And the past has shown, like we are testing on past laws and the past has shown that India has always got enough. In the last 20 years since the BT revolution happened, India has always got enough, so we rest on the, so those past models that we will continue to get enough. But the years where did, we did not get enough, we conveniently forget 2011, where we did not get enough, the market went up over 100%. 2022 again, when we did not get enough, the market went up by 60%. Now the business is whole on 2 to 5%. The whole textile business runs on net margins of 2 to 5%. When the prices go up by 50%, 60%, 80% once in a decade, we think, okay, it's a one of a kind. But so many industries at the lower level, the ancillaries, the supporting industry, the SSI, they get compromised here. The big industries, they do get, but they, 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 they rest on you know, borrowed money, so they do not take it seriously. I am not demeaning any industry. I am just bringing the seriousness here. How agriculture? has defined the future of India. Always a cotton surplus country and always a net exporter of cotton has given us so many benefits. We do not need to forget that. The whole industry has grown on that asset of having surplus cotton. Now when we do not have enough, then we run to the government and help us import more. A pot, a golden pot at the end of the rainbow is what we look at. Why can't we look at a golden pot below our feet? We have the highest land in uh, cotton cultivation in India, 35 to 37%. We are the largest producers in the world, 25%. But we need to have that productivity. Cotton is a food, fuel and fabric crop. So all three needs to be balanced in that. Being the only certified cotton value in India, I realize that we have actually realize only 5% of the value that cotton can give. As Suresh Bhai always says, cotton is a composite economy. It is an economy on its own. So research plays such important role here that we have the research in, in Africa when I had been last year on invitation of ICAC, the first thing they said that we can't believe you have so many scientists in India. In Africa we have to search for scientists who would give us the right advice. We have the seed companies here in India which other countries do not have. We have policies in place in India which other countries do not have. So land, seed companies, policies, scientists, what more do we need? We need more research to bring on the ground. Research is available how industry can uh, collaborate and cooperate here with the government and the research institutes to commercialize that, get into field trials, which I will share in one of my case studies and then get into commercial production in one uh, uh, no, asset a location part that we can look at. Second is the risk management part that we forget. The risk on the raw material is huge for you. Cotton um, is 60% of the whole production cost for Indian textile mill and we are still 55% oriented more towards cotton import. 
So that is the risk part we should not forget. Research can mitigate that risk for the Indian industry and our export. At one time we used to, we used to export 12 million bales of cotton and now we are happy with 2 million bales of cotton. Is that enough? Cotton as a uh, standalone crop has that potential that we can export 10 million bales and still have enough in India. Apart from that, value adding cotton into more and more value added products using the byproducts of cotton can lead to more and all this should be based on research. Research has that much potential. Innovations, we do have innovators in India, startups are abundant in India. So many farm tech uh, companies have got so much funding. But do they really reach out to the farmers? Do they really have that validated data of real time farmers benefiting out of them? And if that is available, how can the industry utilize that for its own commercial benefit? So research and innovation connected to that. Thank you. Thank you, Manish. Uh, unfortunately, I'm getting very strong signals that we need to conclude this session. Uh, I just want to, uh, before I thank my uh, very eminent panelists, I just want to say there are four things for cotton that you need to do. One is stewardship. Now, how do you do that? I can't go into detail. Stewardship is missing. missing. Technology infusion is missing. Replication is missing. And the fourth one is contract farming, which is missing. How do we implement that? Maybe we'll engage offline. I'll share with Ray by stewardship, technology, replication, contract farming. But over. But I will tell you. Yeah. Uh, which uh, we have not covered. Right. But the point is, there is a definite metamorphic change. Yeah. Metamorphic change in the research. And the metamorphic stage is from hybrid to it is a high density planting, straight varieties, the one impactful chain. And second, use of technology like use of satellite, use of sensors are already on, as well as digital technology on, internet of things is on, drone is on, and environmental protection. We have become very, very clear that cotton is the only crop which preserves which, uh, preserves, uh, which uh, preserves the carbon and stores it. Right, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, we are delighted. So many technologies uh, are being I thought you would ask me the very, question, very what is the solution? But yet, over the last three years, we know the challenges that uh, cotton production is facing, that we, are, we were exporters of cotton. My sense is over the next five years, we will become net importers of cotton. And that process has already started. No, we so we will have that debate uh, later. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Nandukumar Kunke, Dr. Gautam, and of course my friend uh, Manish for participating uh, uh, so passionately. There is a lot to discuss in this, uh, 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 on this topic, but uh, for want of time, we need to conclude. Thank you very much. Good luck. God bless you all. Thank you.